Hello everybody, Ian here and uh, we are back with Bontoff Sand Pit Mark layout and we're back from Randolph Railroad Days, two days of a train, train show, having fun and games with this, good fun and games and frustrating fun and games and uh, we've learned a lot in those past two days, things that have Things that, have, things that I've got to do over the next two weeks, three weeks before the um, uh, Granite City train show in St. Cloud. So uh, in this little video, I'll talk about um, what we learnt, what happened and what we're going to do to improve things for the next show. Probably the most important thing we learnt about the layout was loading the skip. Now, you may think we've often talked about how gravity and mass and things don't scale down in uh, model railways and it causes a lot of problems when you're, you're having tipping and loading scenes and such like. But when you're in a large scale like 16 mil there is mass and it does make a difference and uh, what we have to do what we found that we had to do was bias the loading on the uh, skip if you look at this skip here I'll show you and if you look at this skip here you will see that I am I have the uh, load biased towards the rear of the, the skip bucket. So if we push this along to the to the tipper rail, you'll see what happens. It derailed. That's because there is no weight under the rear, under the leading axle. So this the actuation rail actually can help to push the wagon off the track and we found this many many times and it took quite a while to work out that we needed more weight over the front so you can see here I've just flipped the flipped it around and moved the uh, all the weight over the front axle and now if I push this through you will see that he stays on the track and tips <laughs> So that was the most important thing that we learned in the show. There was the loading, how to load the how to load the skips. Yes, you can load it so that it sits in the middle, but it's very difficult to do that. So we actually made a conscious effort to load the bias the load over the front axle and that's when things worked perfectly. One thing we could do is add weight to the skip chassis. Liquid gravity or some such I believe they call it but we don't have anything like that around like right now. It's easy to be wise after the event isn't it? The second thing we learnt were concerned the tipping material itself which we were using as a mixture of uh, woodland scenics, gravels and fine ballasts. We had a nice uh, Tupperware container full of, of the stuff and this is the handy dandy wagon size scoop that I was using to uh, tip the stuff into the, uh, into the wagons off scene as you know there was the uh, bucket for the tipper that then loaded into you the stuff slid down there and into the chute and you can see in the bottom of the chute there there's the grid that was slowing the uh, slowing the flow of the sand and gravel down as we filled into the into the skip so what we found when we uh, did have, would have a little bit of spillage like that, or when we had a lot of spillage, when things went awry, we found that when we vacuumed it up with a mini vacuum cleaner, we were picking up scenic scatter material. And then as that was being tipped into the, 
as the loads were being tipped into the through the grid here we were finding that that the bits of scatter were actually clogging up that grid and uh, sometimes the filling wouldn't work at all so we found that we had to um, get by a second one of these strainers and after we had vacuumed up before we loaded the material back into our bin here for ready ready for tipping we would run it through this strainer so that we would get rid of all the impurities the large sized pieces of scatter and stuff things that would like block the block that grid up and once we'd worked that one out that was great too thing with no impurities in in the sand and gravel things things really did tip very and load very cleanly indeed here is the loco remote iphone interface screen nice and simple lots of big buttons that do exactly what they say the problem here was grease and sweat on your fingers after a while of pressing the same buttons and same spot on the screen repeatedly a film would build up in that spot and sometimes the button wouldn't work quite annoying when you are trying to stop at the tipper and the loco won't stop large spillages would follow and you'd have to do a bit of a clean up as you can see from this shot of the uh, iPhone screen it's clear where the buttons actually were so we just had to clean the iPhone screen regularly of course you tended not to find out the screen needed cleaning until it was too late other than that the loco remote Wi-Fi control was great to use and simple to learn there we go that's about it really there wasn't much to uh, to put right after after the show and those were the main main things the things that we learnt and we can certainly take steps to correct those in time for the granite city train show which is in three weeks and is at the river center in saint cloud minnesota so if there's anybody watching this who's in the midwest it's a fun show always used to be a fun show anyway i think they're having a change of uh, ownership so uh, We'll see what happens this year, but uh, I always enjoy going there. And lots of friends to old friends to meet and such like. So we'll be taking this, and uh, we'll be having another another fun day, loading and uh, dumping sand. So perhaps I'll see you there.